What if extraterrestrials or darker entities able to use these artists and this location with all of these people and all of their energy With all this research going on, Hubby and I decided to have a movie night in. While looking for something interesting to watch, we stumbled across this documentary on Woodstock 99 in Rome, New York. I thought, what an ideal time to watch a documentary on Rome, New York while I'm doing research on weird random creepy spooky things that have happened there so we're gonna go over this documentary and why it's valid and why it's important that i bring this up still continuing the alien docu-series on rome i thought that this was a really cool coincidental topic and i wanted to touch on it and see if you agree with my theories Stay tuned for this video on Rome, New York and the Woodstock of 99. It still is kind of in the spooky category or metaphysical or whatnot. So let me know what you think about this video. In July 1999, the Woodstock Festival was held in Rome, New York. Aiming to recreate the spirit of the original 1969 Woodstock. However, what was meant to be a celebration of peace, love, and music quickly turned into a scene of chaos and tragedy. Woodstock 99 was hosted at the former Griffiths Air Force Base, accommodating over 200,000 attendees was married with poor planning and a lack of adequate facilities, setting the stage for the unfortunate events that followed. At first it was amazing, the lineup was incredible, and everyone was hyped. But as the weekend went on, things started to go downhill very fast. Confusion really started with the location of the festival. The event was held at Griffiths Air Force Base, which is an extremely large plot of parking lot, basically, in cement. The heat was unbearable, and there was hardly any shade at all. Water and food were ridiculously overpriced. They confiscated all water before entering the festival. And the water that was available for water bottles on site was contaminated. And the sanitary conditions were terrible. Festival goers were passing out heat stroke and lack of water and hydration. Temperatures soared above 100 degrees. Prices for basic necessities like water that were sky high. This was said to have led to the widespread frustration and anger on the site. There's just that negative energy that really started to run through the crowd. Performers such as Jewel, so uncomfortable from the crowd's hostility, she was seen leaving the grounds immediately after her performance ended. Jewel was not the only female that was intimidated. There were so many reports of women being essayed on site and during the three-day festival, it's actually hard to process how many reports there were. Turning point or tipping point of the entire event was started with a band called Limp Biscuit. I added some footage here as well. If you listen to what he's saying, it really reflects on what I've been saying this whole time about Rome. 
The fact that he's telling this unbelievable amount of people to take all of their energy, their bad energy, and to just put it out into the surrounding area, I mean, that alone can affect this location for years and years and years, I mean forever maybe, potentially. Final night the situation spiraled out of control during and after the performance with Limp Biscuit, Red Hot Chili Peppers um, fires were set during their performance and the festival grounds descended into complete chaos. Vendor booths were looted, trailers and vehicles were being torched and set on fire. Rome burnt. Rome burnt. Hour dedicated to peace and love and music that was set on fire and torn down. First responders were called, but they couldn't reach anybody in the crowd that needed their attention. But there were a total of three deaths, tons of essay reports, physical assaults, pure chaos, and yeah. Emergency responders said it was like a war zone, overwhelmed by the sheer number of injuries and incidences. It was clear that the festival had become a dangerous environment for everybody involved. Just escalated everything so much more and just shined a light on uh, the anger, the hostility, and all of that horrible energy that is now poured right into Rome, New York. The pinnacle of what we're doing these documentaries on. The aftermath, oh, the extent of the devastation became very clear to the public. But several attendees were hospitalized. Uh, there were numerous, numerous assaults, violence. The festival intended to be a celebration of music and unity, but it ended as a cautionary tale of mismanagement and chaos. Woodstock 99 definitely is a constant reminder, at least for me, because I go to Rome, I lived in Rome. Um, it's a reminder of how a dream of peace and music can turn into a nightmare. A combination of corporate greed, poor planning, lack of respect from the, the attendees that came to Rome. When profit is prioritized over the well-being of the people, there should have been more security, there should have been free water, things like that. When I say that this energy will be here and will last forever, I can feel that tension, anger, hostility, and just a hateful evil in Rome every time I visit there. Fred Durst was possessed. He had always been in Rome and amplified that energy, or he came there with it and left it there for us all to just be tortured with for the rest of time. Either way, that event has a connection with negative evil looming. What if extraterrestrials or darker entities able to use these artists and this location with all of these people and all of their energy or to give it life? You have to think about events such as sporting events, football, NFL, Super Bowl, that type of stuff. Those arenas are built a very specific way to harness energy from us as an audience, as a collective. So what if there were darker energies present in Rome, New York, drawing from that crowd to give it life? You gotta ask yourself, right? I mean, that is a possibility. I don't know. It's just kind of a cool theory of mine.
said that we couldn't handle the traffic, and we did. And they said that the security would work. And now some of them are saying we can't clean it up. And we will. And we will. We will. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to my channel. And I just want to say thank you for stopping by.